salt and sodium. Salt, also known as sodium chloride, is about 40% sodium and 60% chloride. It flavors food and is used as a binder and stabilizer. It is also a food preservative, as bacteria can't thrive in the presence of a high amount of salt. The human body requires a small amount of sodium to conduct nerve impulses, contract and relax muscles, and maintain the proper balance of water and minerals. It is estimated that we need about 500 mg of sodium daily for these vital functions. But too much sodium in the diet can lead to high blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke. It can also cause calcium losses, some of which may be pulled from bone. Most people consume too much salt, on average 9 to 12 grams per day, or around twice the recommended maximum level of intake. An estimated 2.5 million deaths could be prevented each year if global salt consumption were reduced to the recommended level. Are natural salts healthier than table salt? Salt is harvested from salt mines or by evaporating ocean water. All types of salt are made of sodium chloride, and the nutrient content varies minimally. Although less processed salts contain small amounts of minerals, the amount is not enough to offer substantial nutritional benefit. Different salts are chosen mainly for flavor. Shaker of table salt, the most widely used, table salt, is extracted from underground salt deposits. It is heavily processed to remove impurities, which may also remove trace minerals. It is then ground very fine. Iodine, a trace mineral, was added to salt in 1924 to prevent goiter and hypothyroidism, medical conditions caused by iodine deficiency. Table salt also often contains an anti-caking agent such as calcium silicate to prevent clumps from forming. Kosher salt is a coarsely grained salt named for its use in traditional kosher food preparation. Kosher salt does not typically contain iodine but may have an anti-caking agent. Sea salt is produced by evaporating ocean or sea water. It is also composed mostly of sodium chloride, but sometimes contains small amounts of minerals like potassium, zinc, and iron depending on where it was harvested. Because it is not highly refined and ground like table salt, it may appear coarser and darker with an uneven color, indicating the remaining impurities and nutrients. Unfortunately, some of these impurities can contain metals found in the ocean, like lead. The coarseness and granule size will vary by brand. Himalayan pink salt is harvested from mines in Pakistan. Its pink hue comes from small amounts of iron oxide. Similar to sea salt, it is less processed and refined and therefore the crystals appear larger and contain small amounts of minerals including iron, calcium, potassium, and magnesium. Larger, coarser salt granules do not dissolve as easily or evenly in cooking, but offer a burst of flavor. They are best used sprinkled onto meats and vegetables before cooking or immediately after. They should not be used in baking recipes. Measurements of different salts Keep in mind that measurements of different salts are not always interchangeable in recipes. Generally, sea salt and table salt can be interchanged if the granule size is similar. However, table salt tends to have more concentrated, saltier flavor than kosher salt. So the substitution is 1 teaspoon of table salt for about 1.5 to 2 teaspoons of kosher salt depending on the brand. Sodium as a food ingredient As a food ingredient, sodium has multiple uses, such as for curing meat, baking, thickening, retaining moisture, enhancing flavor, including the flavor of other ingredients, and as a preservative. Some common food additives are, monosodium glutamate, MSG, sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, sodium nitrite, and sodium benzoate. They also contain sodium and contribute, in lesser amounts, to the total amount of sodium listed on the Nutrition Facts label. Surprisingly, some foods that don't taste salty can still be high in sodium, which is why using taste alone is not an accurate way to judge a food's sodium content. For example, while some foods that are high in sodium, like pickles and soy sauce, taste salty. But there are also many foods, like cereals and pastries, that contain sodium but don't taste salty. Also, some foods that you may eat several times a day, such as breads, can add up to a lot of sodium over the course of a day, even though an individual serving may not be high in sodium. Sodium and Health in most people, the kidneys have trouble keeping up with excess sodium in the blood. 
As sodium accumulates, the body holds on to water to dilute the sodium. This increases both the amount of fluid surrounding cells and the volume of blood in the bloodstream. Increased blood volume means more work for the heart and more pressure on blood vessels. Over time, the extra work and pressure can stiffen blood vessels, leading to high blood pressure, heart attack, and stroke. It can also lead to heart failure. There is some evidence that too much salt can damage the heart, aorta, and kidneys without increasing blood pressure, and that it may be bad for bones, too. A diet high in salt, or sodium, can cause raised blood pressure, which can increase your risk of heart disease and stroke. High blood pressure often has no symptoms, and many people who have high blood pressure do not know it. How much salt for adults, children and babies? Adults should eat no more than 6 grams of salt a day, 2.4 grams sodium, that's around 1 teaspoon. Children aged, 1 to 3 years should eat no more than 2 grams salt a day, 0.8 grams sodium. 4 to 6 years should eat no more than 3 grams salt a day, 1.2 grams sodium. 7 to 10 years should eat no more than 5 grams salt a day, 2 grams sodium. 11 years and over should eat no more than 6 grams salt a day, 2.4 grams sodium. Babies should not eat much salt, because their kidneys are not fully developed to process it. Babies under 1 year old should have less than 1 gram of salt a day. Breastfeed. If a baby is breastfed, they will get the right amount of minerals, including sodium, from breast milk. Formula milk contains a similar amount of minerals to breast milk. Do not add salt to your baby's milk or food and do not use stock cubes or gravy in meals for your baby as they're often high in salt and their kidneys cannot cope with it. Remember this when you're cooking for the family if you plan to give the same food to your baby. Avoid giving your baby salty foods such as bacon, sausages, crackers, crisps, ready meals or takeaways as these are often high in salt. Food manufactured specifically for babies should meet the recommended levels. If in doubt, always check food labels. Foods that contain salt. Some foods are almost always high in salt because of the way they are made. Other foods, such as bread and breakfast cereals, can contribute a lot of salt to our diet. But that's not because these foods are always high in salt, it's because we eat a lot of them. High Salt Foods The following foods are almost always high in salt. To cut down on salt, eat them less often and have smaller amounts. Anchovies, bacon, cheese, gravy granules, ham, olives, pickles, prawns, salami, salted and dry roasted nuts, salt fish, smoked meat and fish, soy sauce, stock cubes, yeast extract. Foods that can be high in salt. In the following foods, the salt content can vary widely between different brands or varieties. That means you can cut down on salt by comparing brands and choosing the one that is lower in salt. Nutrition labels can help you do this. These foods include, bread products such as crumpets, bagels and ciabatta, pasta sauces, crisps, pizza, ready meals, soup, sandwiches, sausages, tomato ketchup, mayonnaise and other sauces, breakfast cereals, soluble vitamin supplements and painkillers, effervescent, dissolvable, vitamin supplement or effervescent painkillers can contain up to 1 gram salt per tablet. Signs of deficiency and toxicity. Deficiency, a deficiency of sodium in the US is rare because it is so commonly added to a wide variety of foods and occurs naturally in some foods. Hyponatremia is the term used to describe abnormally low amounts of sodium in the blood. This occurs mainly in older adults, particularly those living in long-term care facilities or hospitals. These patients take medications or have health conditions that deplete the body of sodium, leading to hyponatremia. Excess vomiting, diarrhea, and sweating can also cause hyponatremia if salt is lost in these fluids that are expelled from the body. Sometimes too much fluid abnormally collecting in the body can lead to hyponatremia, which might stem from diseases such as heart failure or liver cirrhosis. Hyponatremia In rare cases, simply drinking too much fluid can lead to hyponatremia if the kidneys can't excrete the excess water. Symptoms of hyponatremia can include, nausea, vomiting, headaches, altered mental state or confusion, lethargy, seizures, coma. 
toxicity, too much sodium in the blood is called hypernatremia. This acute condition can happen in older adults who are mentally and physically impaired who do not eat or drink enough, or who are sick with a high fever, vomiting, or infection that causes severe dehydration. Excessive sweating or diuretic medications that deplete the body of water are other causes. When sodium accumulates in the blood, water is transferred out of cells and into the blood to dilute it. This fluid shift and a buildup of fluid in the brain can cause seizures, coma, or even death. Extra fluid collecting in the lungs can cause difficulty breathing. Other symptoms of hypernatremia can include, nausea, vomiting, weakness, loss of appetite, intense thirst, confusion, kidney damage. The interplay of sodium and potassium. Sodium and potassium are closely interconnected but have opposite effects in the body. Both are essential nutrients that play key roles in maintaining physiological balance, and both have been linked to the risk of chronic diseases, especially cardiovascular disease. High salt intake increases blood pressure, which can lead to heart disease, while high potassium intake can help relax blood vessels and excrete sodium while decreasing blood pressure. A study in the archives of internal medicine found that People who ate high sodium, low potassium diets had a higher risk of dying from a heart attack or any cause. In this study, people with the highest sodium intakes had a 20% higher risk of death from any cause than people with the lowest sodium intakes. People with the highest potassium intakes had a 20% lower risk of dying than people with the lowest intakes. But what may be even more important for health is the relationship of sodium to potassium in the diet. People with the highest ratio of sodium to potassium in their diets had double the risk of dying of a heart attack than people with the lowest ratio, and they had a 50% higher risk of death from any cause. People can make a key dietary change to help lower their risk. Eat more fresh vegetables and fruits, which are naturally high in potassium and low in sodium. But eat less bread, cheese, processed meat, and other processed foods that are high in sodium and low in potassium. Adding salt to food at table can cut years off your life, study finds. Research involving 500,000 Britons reveals link to earlier death for those who always season their meals. Up to 20% of sodium intake in Western populations comes from salt added at the table. Researchers found that always adding salt to food knocks more than two years off life expectancy for men and one and a half years for women. This does not include seasoning during the cooking process. The findings were based on research involving more than 500,000 participants in the UK Biobank study, who were followed for an average of 9 years. Compared with those who never or rarely added salt, those who always seasoned their food had a 28% increased risk of dying prematurely. At the age of 50, men and women who always added salt had a life expectancy 2.3 years and 1.5 years shorter respectively. Other factors that could affect outcomes, include, age, sex, ethnicity, deprivation, body mass index, smoking, alcohol intake, physical activity, diet and medical conditions such as diabetes, cancer and heart disease. It is hard to pinpoint the sweet spot in terms of health for any given individual. Misperceptions about salt reduction 1. On a hot and humid day when you sweat, you need more salt in the diet. There is little salt lost through sweat so there is no need for extra salt even on a hot and humid day, although it is important to drink a lot of water. 2. Sea salt is not better than manufactured salt simply because it is natural. Regardless of the source of salt, it is the sodium in salt that causes bad health outcomes. 3. Salt added during cooking is not the main source of salt intake. In many countries, about 80% of salt in the diet comes from processed foods. 4. Food does not need salt to have appealing flavor. It takes some time for a person's taste buds to adjust, but once they get used to less salt, one is more likely to enjoy food and notice a broader range of flavors. 5. Food has no flavor without salt. Whilst this may be true at first, taste buds soon become accustomed to less salt and you are more likely to enjoy food with less salt, and more flavor. 6. Foods high in salt taste salty. Some foods that are high in salt don't taste very salty because sometimes they are mixed with other things like sugars that mask the taste. It is important to read food labels to find out sodium levels. 7. Only old people need to worry about how much salt they eat. 
Eating too much salt can raise blood pressure at any age. 8. Reducing salt could be bad for my health. It's very difficult to eat too little salt since there are so many everyday foods containing salt. 10 Easy Tips for Reducing Sodium Consumption Learning about sodium in foods and exploring new ways to prepare foods can help you achieve your sodium goal. And, if you follow these tips to reduce the amount of sodium you consume, your taste for sodium will gradually decrease over time, so eventually, you may not even miss it. 1. Read the Nutrition Facts Label Compare and choose foods to get less than 100% dV, less than 2300 mg, of sodium each day. 2. Prepare your own food when you can. Limit packaged sauces, mixes, and instant products, including flavored rice, instant noodles, and ready-made pasta. 3. Add flavor without adding sodium. Limit the amount of table salt you add to foods when cooking, baking, or at the table. Try no salt seasoning blends and herbs and spices instead of salt to add flavor to your food. 4. Buy fresh, choose fresh meat, poultry, and seafood, rather than processed varieties. Also, check the package on fresh meat and poultry to see if salt water or saline has been added. 5. Watch your veggies. Buy fresh, frozen, no sauce or seasoning, or low sodium or no salt added canned vegetables. 6. Give sodium the rinse. Rinse sodium containing canned foods, such as beans, tuna, and vegetables before eating. This removes some of the sodium. 7. Unsalt your snacks. Choose low sodium or no salt added nuts, seeds, and snack products, such as chips and pretzels, or have carrot or celery sticks instead. 8. Consider your condiments, sodium in condiments can add up. Choose light or reduced sodium condiments, add oil and vinegar to salads rather than bottled dressings, and use only a small amount of seasoning from flavoring packets instead of the entire packet. 9. Reduce your portion size, less food means less sodium. Prepare smaller portions at home and consume less when eating out, choose smaller sizes, split an entree with a friend, or take home part of your meal. 10. Make lower sodium choices at restaurants. Ask for your meal to be prepared without table salt and request that sauces and salad dressings be served on the side, then use less of them. You can also ask if nutrition information is available and then choose options that are lower in sodium.